Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Coast Shell YouTube Child Donkster Bomb, but built for theme park news, and welcome to a Coast Shell review. It's time to get corrected, guys, because today's review is all about the Smiler, the Gerslar Infinity Roller Coaster at Alton Towers that opened back in 2013. I'm going to be reviewing the queue line experience, the ride experience, the off ride experience in the queue line and off the ride from outside the queue line watching it go around and also my overall thoughts and my what I would do to improve it. So let's start with some stats and facts. So please like, comment, subscribe and click the notification bell to see you in this YouTube video. Please share with your friends, your family, social media and keep getting your questions in for our next Q&A in the, description, in the comments down below. Use the hashtag question before or after your question for the 2000 subscriber Q&A when we hit that milestone. And let's get into this video. So let's start with stats and facts. So the Smiler at the Alton Towers Resort opened on the 31st of May 2013. It's known as an infinity coaster. It's sort of the upgrade to the Eurofighter model by manufacturer Gerslau made in Germany. Now the Smiler, in terms of its stats and facts, is the world's first 14 looper roller coaster. It's got the most inversions on any roller coaster in the world. It has a length of 3,838.6 feet, a drop of 98.4 feet, a speed of 52.8 miles per hour, and a duration of 2 minutes and 45 seconds. Its musical accompaniment is by a company called I'm a Score from Germany, who've done lots of theme park soundtracks, at a cost of £18 million this ride, and it replaced the former Black Hole roller coaster, which operated as a Schwarzkopf Jetstar 2 coaster from 1983 all the way up until the 5th of March 2005. The black hole tent was stood silent for two, for, for, since 2005 right up until 2012, the opening year of Subterra in Forbidden Valley and Ice Age 4D in the now Cloud Land, now known as World David Williams. Now of course the black hole tent in that year, 2012, was taken down and banners were put around the site for Secret Weapon 7. That became the Smiler, and we've been get, we were guessing for months, even before this channel existed. I was guessing for months what it could be. I was in school. I was keeping up to date with the teasers. One minute I'd be doing my schoolwork, and then I'd have a separate tab for afterwards, just to when the lesson's done, just to quickly check, you know, any SW7 updates. Um, and it was announced. It was announced in the winter of 2012 to 2013. The Smiler was announced. The world's first 14 looper roller coaster. Now, there were some bizarre rumours about what this could be and what this world's first element or world's beating element could be. But after the sort of branding and the name came up, came out, it was very clear it was going to be a most inversion in a coaster record. Uh, now, of course, this coaster is very much themed around a company called the Ministry of Joy. And the Ministry of Joy is all about testing people and making them feel less negative with the world, but doing it in a very mental psychosis type way. Uh, using marmalization, uh, very much like uh, dark, twisted, hypnotic techniques, uh, which of course, you know, it sort of bred the name of the sanctuary, which the scare maze that accompanied the ride. Uh, that started in 2012. It was operating as a seasonal attraction up until a certain point in 2013 as well, uh, before it became a scarefest thing for one more year. So, you know, it's it's had a long history. It's not had the longest of histories compared to other mazes, but it sort of it did what it did, kind of like the welcoming with Wicker Man. It accompanied the ride. Uh, Wicker Man, of course, was Secret Weapon 8, the one after the Smiler. Now, of course, let's start with the queue line experience. So, the queue line starts, and what, one thing I do like about the queue line experience is the fact that you are going underneath the ride. And going underneath the ride is a very, very, very good um, sort of thing to have with this. It's very good to go underneath the ride and see the ride flying above you. Uh, and, I, and that's one thing I particularly liked about this queue line experience. There was queue line screens all around, um, advertising this marmalization experience. I remember, now this is before the unfortunate incident on the Smiler a few years ago now, but I remember queuing for the Smiler and seeing those words halfway through the ride, like halfway to get corrected before it was changed to just halfway after the incident. Uh, so, personally, with the Smiler having a jet wash uh, this past winter season just gone, I'd like to see some 
um, more correction enhancing theming coming to the ride for next winter season uh, when it gets around to this winter um, so I would like to see some new theming elements added to the spell to make it more enjoyable around the queue line uh, but for now at least it is decent uh, so walking through the queue line and towards the end of the queue line you've got the indoor bit of queue line now there's lots of brilliant black and yellow projection mapping all around the queue line and there's real uh, a, a real sense of danger kind of like queuing for oblivion when you see in the queue line videos and you sort of get warned about you know you're about to you know your brain's not you know there's a, something in your brain that's sort of ticked that made you want to go and experience oblivion it's got that same sort of um, sci-fi-ish you know hypnotic technique of making you want to ride it and the black and yellow projection mapping was quite um, sensitifying, if that's a word, um, but it's quite spellbounding and spellbinding how um, the projection mapping works when it's working. Of course, there are times when it's sort of half on, half off, or none on at all, and it's pretty much nearly pitch black in the indoor queue line. And the only light is from the staircase going up to the station, which is ridiculous. Uh, but when it is fully working, it looks amazing. Now, of course, there are there has been some changes in the last few years. Of course, those of you who remember the Smiler from its early couple of years will remember the baggage hall was before the station, so you could never film in the station at all. Uh, so you had to leave your bags and your equipment uh, with the baggage system, with the baggage hold system. If you didn't leave, it was someone else who's not riding. Uh, so that's one that's one particular thing to note, guys. If you're visiting Alton Towers in the near future, when, when we get back to the theme parks, make sure you if you if someone's not there to hold your bags that you can trust, trust the baggage hold system at Alton Towers because they are fantastic. They give you like a wristband. Uh, it's a very tight wristband as well, so it won't come off. It won't hurt, but it won't come off on the ride either. Uh, so you'll get your number on your wristband, and then you hand in your wristband. They'll, they'll get the number, and then they'll get your bags to you. That's a massive tip, families and thrill seekers and children that are watching this. Uh, for when you visit Alton Towers, make sure you use the baggage hold system because um, sneaking a camera onto ride is not worth it. I haven't done it personally, but I know, but I've seen, I've heard stories of people that have done it, and it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk at all. So you know, I'd really recommend you leave it in the bag. Uh, but of course, recently in the last few years with the Smiler, the baggage hold is now in the station, so you can. Uh, you know, if they know that you're going to put your camera in your bag before you get onto the ride, you just want to film the station and say, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Kind of like with the Hex pre-shows. I asked a staff member, can I, finish, uh, can I film the pre-shows and not the ride? Yeah, that's fine. Fair enough. You just you just got to ask, really. You just go ask. Uh, so I didn't get any station footage last year, but I hope to get some this year, fingers crossed. And, um, yeah, so the bag of toll before was below the staircase, and now it's actually in the station above the staircase. Uh, so, once you've sort of gone through the indoor queue line with the projection mapping, when you get up the stairs to the station of the ride, you've also got the soundtrack uh, playing in the background, and you've got this uh, bright light uh, and the gates at the side ready for when you sort of start your journey, I guess. Um, so, you know, when you depart uh, on your ride, on the start of your ride, you sort of say, you, you get that thing, um, join us. And then when you come into the break run, when you come back into the station and the train parks up, it's like, you belong to the Smiler. Uh, so it's sort of like the start of the journey and the end of the journey. So it's very clear that this coaster followed a story. Many people might not think it follows a story. I personally feel like it does follow a story. It follows a story, this journey, this process of marmalization and this sort of Ministry of Joy sanctuary test. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the full layout of the experience. You can watch, you know, 4K POVs on YouTube and things like that. I've got some off-ride footage on the channel as well, so make sure you go check that out. Um, but yeah, I would really recommend you go and watch POVs to see the full layout. But when you come off the ride, you go through a lovely exit queue line. I, I won't call it a queue line technically, but I call it like an exit line. And it goes up, it goes down, it goes through, it's got projection mapping, it's very dark. And of course you exit into the Smiler's shop. 
uh, where you can get your photo, you can get some Smiler merchandise. I think they sell some millions as well. It's like a millions machine that was in the old air shop before that became the roller coaster restaurant when it became Galactica. Uh, so I think there's like a millions machine in there. I don't know if it's still there, but I know there was a millions machine in Tavis Trading. But I think there might be one in the Smiler shop still as well. Because I definitely think there was one at some point. Uh, but it was a nice exit line through to the Smiler shop. It was still well themed. It still stayed themed throughout. And um, yeah, overall, um, it was not a bad experience off-ride. Now the on-ride experience. So if you don't want to know what happens on-ride in terms of my personal experiences of it, then I would skip forward a few minutes. But for those of you who have stayed and want to know my thoughts on this, I think it's a decent coaster. It's not the best coaster I've done in my opinion, but it is a decent coaster. It's got you know pops of airtime here and there it's got smoothness in places depends on where you sit there's a long room within the community and i've had this as well if you sit on the back row of the car that you're in um you don't get as good a ride as if you're further the front i think it's a front row ride this one because it's not really about the airtime it's about the inversions on this one how it turns your stomach so i really feel like a front row ride is better if you want to try a back row, be my guest. Or, you know, middle of the road experience, be my guest. But I personally think the front row is better. Because in the back row, you don't get airtime. You don't get, you know, much smoothness compared to other rows. Middle, middle of the road experience, so the mid rows, uh, the mid couple of rows, is sort of, it's better than the back row, but not as good as the front, in my opinion. But middle row has actually had some good rides, some better rides than the front. And there's actually one rare occasion where the back row, back row ride was actually better than the front row ride, which is odd. Um, but in terms of the actual ride experience, the inversions, they were carefully laid out. It was it was nicely placed. Um, it was sort of like seven inversions on one half of the ride, seven, seven inversions on the other half. And it was very uh, complicated. It was a very tangly type layout. It was sort of like, well, this looks like a tangly wangly mess of who knows what but actually on ride it made sense because it felt like you were being loop after loop after loop after loop and it was sort of that it, again it added to that marmalization story process so in my opinion that was a nice addition to the ride uh, now i've done this ride a few times now a few times over the last few years since it's been open obviously 2023 will be 10 years since the smiler open which is ridiculous uh, hopefully the next secret weapon comes in the 10th anniversary of the Smiler. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's not a bad experience. It's not the best coaster, but it's still a decent ride. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's not my favourite coaster out there. It's not, one of, it's not one of my all-time favourites that I've done so far. But it's not the worst. It's definitely not down there with the worst. It's sort of like middle of the road. If you're scoring it in like a Premier League table, I guess... It's not in the relegation zone, it's not fighting for relegation, it's sort of mid-table, maybe sort of stretching towards the, the top 10, maybe. <laughs> That's the best way I'd describe it. Uh, so, so it's sort of just inside the lower mid-table, I guess, but it's still a decent ride. Uh, so, I'd, but, but what I will say is, like all the rides at Alton Towers and all the rides in the theme parks across the UK, Europe, the world, I would really recommend it. I would recommend it. Now, for those of you who are back after skipping forward a few minutes after hearing my thoughts on it, welcome back. Uh, <laughs> but, like I was saying to the people that have watched throughout my thoughts as well, I really, really recommend this ride. I really do, because if, you, if you're if you afraid of coasters and you need a big coaster that you want to challenge and you're up for, you're passionate about trying a big coaster for the first time, Smiler isn't the best one to start off with. I think the best thrill coaster to start off with would be the likes of Wicker Man, uh, and maybe even Oblivion, Nemesis, Air, and then sort and Thirteen, of course, as well. And moving to sort of like the Reeters and the, the the Smilers, you know, further down. But I think that Smiler is a good thrill coaster to add to your collection. I think I'd definitely recommend it. Like all the rides, Alton Towers, they're fantastic. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to rate it. Obviously, now we don't really you know rate things out of ten on these on these reviews. We just we, we appreciate them, we share our thoughts and we appreciate them, we don't give them a rating. 
So I would appreciate the Smiler. I really do appreciate it. It's a good coaster. It's a historic coaster for the UK. One with the most inversions. Obviously, the new record for America is, of course, taken by Steel Curtain at Kennywood, uh, manufactured by SNS. Multi it's a multi loop by SNS uh, worldwide. But, of course, that hasn't taken the record off Smiler yet. So I don't think anything's going to take a record off Smiler yet. But when it does come along, you know, what happens to the Smiler? Does it become, does it still become historic for the country? Does it still become a good coaster? It is still a decent coaster, yes, and I'd still recommend it, even after the record gets taken. Uh, so there we go. So that is my review of the Smiler at Alton Towers Resort. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, my name is Coast Show YouTube channel. Keep living the coast life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.